In this video, I'm going to show you how to increase your website traffic without building backlinks. What's up guys? My name is Greg Kononenko and I run this YouTube channel Caffeinated Blogger. On this channel, I put out regular videos dedicated to traffic generation, niche marketing, affiliate marketing, and making money online. Subscribe to my YouTube channel just below this video. Tick the bell notification icon as well to make sure that you never miss my future videos. Let's get into it. I want to share with you the analytics stats for one of the websites that I have recently started. This website is only three and a half, four months old. And as you can see, my organic traffic is growing very steadily. So uh, on a couple of occasions, I've gotten close to 2000 visitors in a single week. And as you can see, the traffic is constantly growing. I have not built a single backlink to this website, guys. And it is in a fitness niche. This is a very highly competitive niche. And I'm gonna show you exactly what you can do as well to start getting traffic to your website without building any backlinks. As we know, backlinks can be very expensive. It can cost you thousands of dollars every single month to build backlinks. But guess what? You don't need to do it if you do things correctly. And I'm gonna show you seven things that you can do in order to start getting traffic like what you can see here in pretty much any niche. Step number one is to choose the right keywords. I'm gonna walk you through exactly what I do every single time when I publish a new piece of content. And um, I've got this recipe pretty much down pat. It works every single time. I'm gonna show you an example from my blog, Caffeinated Blogger. So let's first look into these blog post high paying affiliate programs. If I take this URL and then I analyze this URL in Ahrefs, you can see that for all of the keywords that I was targeting, I'm not ranking anywhere on page one in the top 10 positions. For this keyword, highest paying affiliate programs, I'm ranking at position 13, so I'm not actually on page one of Google. Let's look at keyword difficulty here. So I went after some keywords that were keyword difficulty 35, 15, and so on. And of course, there is quite a lot of competition for the keywords with higher keyword difficulty. So when somebody searches for high paying affiliate programs on Google, my website does not come up on page one and I don't get any traffic. Now let's look at this article, stock photos that don't suck best stock photo sites. If I analyze this URL in Ahrefs, you will see that I'm actually ranking on page one for a lot of the keywords, which is really good news. That's what I wanted. And that is because keyword difficulty here you can see is three. Okay, so if you go, as you can see, if you go for keywords with low keyword difficulty, then it is quite easy to end up on page one of Google. As you can see, if I type that into Google and I scroll down, then here we are. My website is here on page one. I am coming up at the number 10 spot in the Australian Google. However, in the US Google, as you can see, I'm currently on position six. And my website is actually getting reasonably good search traffic from this particular keyword onto this page. So you can now see that choosing the right keywords is very, very important. But the question now is, how do you actually find the right keyword? I'm gonna show you step-by-step step exactly how to do that. And I want to remind you that I personally did not build any backlinks to the Caffeinated Blogger website. So all of these rankings and all of this traffic that I'm getting now is without any backlinks at all. First of all, you should install a free toolbar called Ahrefs Toolbar. So just type in Ahrefs Toolbar and install this toolbar into your browser. After you have installed the Ahrefs Toolbar, the next thing is to find a competitor website that we're going to reverse engineer. So for this example, I'm going to put in a key phrase, how to start a blog, but you can use any niche for this. This works in any niche. So for example, if the niche in which your website is in is about pets or dogs, you know, you can put in how to train a puppy. So you can use this method in any niche. So after you've entered your target key phrase, what you want to do is you want to start analyzing the websites one by one. And the first thing that you will want to do is you will want to take the very first website that comes up, the most relevant one, the one that Google seems to think is the authority website for this particular key phrase. So for how to start a blog, the first one that I'm seeing is this domain called the blog starter. So let us take this URL and let's analyze it in Ahrefs. I'm here inside the Ahrefs dashboard. I've gone into Site Explorer. I've put in 
theblogstarter.com into Site Explorer and here are the results that it's showing me. It's showing me that this domain is ranking for 41.4 thousand different organic keywords it's getting a ton of traffic. The traffic score is 187,000, which is really, really high. And what we want to do now is check exactly which keywords this blog is ranking for so that we can try to sort of ethically borrow some of the keywords because they've already done all of the keyword research. Okay, we can see that they've published a ton of content and we can pick out of these keywords, we can pick some keywords that we might want to use as well. So let's go in here, let's apply a keyword difficulty filter of 15. 15 generally is a good guideline. I find that any keywords uh, with keyword difficulty up to about 15, you can generally rank for just by publishing good content. You do not need to build backlinks for easy keywords like that. Uh, the other filter that we want to apply is volume. So let's apply a volume of 100 or more. And now what you will want to do is take a look at all of the different keywords and find some of the keywords that are relevant to your website, to your niche, that you might be able to start writing content about as well. So right here I can see already some pretty cool keywords that if somebody is in the blogging and WordPress niche might want to use, such as, for example, header image. So that's three and a half thousand volume, how to edit this header in WordPress, keyword difficulty of just five, header image is keyword difficulty of just two. So these are some really, really good keywords actually to go for. Here is another one that's on page two, how to become a food blogger, volume of 350, keyword difficulty of just 12, which is of course a little bit higher than some of the other ones. Some of the other ones have zero or even one and five, etc. But this is also, uh, very good keyword because a lot of people will be wanting to buy courses, etc. So if you can rank for how to become a food blogger, you can generally sell your own courses or promote affiliate products, you know, so that's a really, really good keyword to go for. Ahrefs is a paid tool, but you can also use a tool called Ubersuggest and it works in a similar manner. So you would enter the blog URL here and click search and then take a look at the results. And then once you're here on the results page, you would click on organic keywords to see all of the organic keywords that this domain is ranking for. And then you can use it in a similar manner to what we did in Ahrefs, where you would basically look at SD, which is SEO difficulty and only go for the keywords that are green, that have a difficulty of as low as possible, really. For example, this one, how to blog a website is got a SEO difficulty of just 11, which is really, really good. Once you finished analyzing one website, you can go back to your search results and then look at all of the other websites. So we've done the blog starter. So then you would go to blogging basics 101. Then you would go into coding WP to RY Rob, etc. So you can never really run out of ideas and you can never really run out of keywords because all of these guys, all of these uh, websites that are there on page one, they have done the research already. So then you can kind of take the research that they have done, analyze it in Ahrefs or an Ubersuggest, and you can pull out the best keywords that are low competition. That's exactly what I have been doing with uh, several of my niche websites. And you know, it works in, I would say 70 to 80% of cases. Of course, the, I don't uh, hit a home run. I don't successfully, um, post and get traffic with every single blog post. But I would say 70 to 80% of the time, if I follow this technique, I uncover some really good keywords. Okay, so now the most important, the foundational thing is done. We've got our keywords. Next thing to do is to create a post outline that will make it easy for you to actually create the blog post itself. So when I was writing this article about stock photos that don't suck, what I did was once I knew that this is a good keyword with difficulty of just three and a good volume, I went into Google and I typed that into Google. Then I opened the top 10 results and I studied them. For example, we know that this article on Medium and this article on Impact BND are ranking as number one and number two. So it means that they've got the content uh, that Google likes and present it in a way that Google likes. So our job now is to create content that is at least equally good or ideally better. So it's either needs to be longer or more in depth or include more resources. So the medium.com article, as we can see, is very, very short. There is almost no text on here, just links to various websites that provide 
royalty-free images. Likewise, the article on Impact BND is also very short. It pretty much just has links and it's got a few sentences of a, or actually like a two or three sentence description of each of the websites. So I knew instantly that I can produce content that is at least equally good and I can also make it longer and more in depth because all I need to do is just provide links to some websites and write a little bit about them. That is exactly why I keep saying that your keyword research is so important. This is why this has got keyword difficulty of three. If you look at the actual websites that are ranking on page one, the picture might, might look scary. You will think that you will never be able to compete with Medium because their domain rank is 93, next one is domain rank 82, etc. But if you actually look at the websites, Ahrefs takes all of those things into consideration that there is almost no content on these sites, guys. And if you write something reasonably decent and in depth, then you can outrank these websites. So then for our outline, I would literally put in intro and then I would put in the names of this. Then for the intro, I will take a look at what these guys wrote for the intro. So here it says finding great stock photos is a pain. I'm going to take that idea. Of course, I'm not going to copy this word for word, but I'm going to take this as an idea, which I'll expl expand later. Then from here, I will take some other idea. So from here, I might take breathe new life into the website. Then after that, I will just take some of the resources from here. Okay, so maybe every second one because there are so many of these stock websites. Okay, so maybe take three or four from here, take another few resources from here, then go through the rest of these websites here on page one and borrow a few of these resources so that your list is unique, but for research, you can use a couple of sources from each of those other websites. That's it, that's pretty much our outline done. So then the next thing that you would need to do, you would need to write the actual content in WordPress. And then using your outline, just simply start writing. Write that intro and then put in each of the resources and write a little bit about each of the resources, a few sentences, just the way that the competing websites have done. So all you need to do is just to make sure that your text is equally good or ideally uh, at least a little bit better than your competitors on page one. I want to make it clear that you cannot just take this and copy it and paste it onto your website. You need to rewrite it in your own words. So instead of writing Pixels not only has awesome photos but high quality video too, you can say that users of Pixels can use this website to get great stock videos and stock photos. So just rewrite it in your own words. Next step after you have written your content is to use the plugin called Yoast SEO. After you have installed and activated this plugin, you can use it here at the bottom and you can enter the focus key phrase of the keyword that you're trying to rank for and then look at the SEO analysis that it gives you. As you can see here, I've got green smiley face, which means that my SEO is good enough and Yoast will actually guide you and it will tell you what you need to change in order for your website or for your page to perform better. So while I was getting ready for this, I changed a couple of things on this post. As you can see, now it's a single title, so H1 should only be used as your main title. Find all H1s in your text that aren't in your main title and change them to a lower heading level. Okay, so I changed this just as we we're kind of getting into the, uh, as I was getting ready for this video to demonstrate to you that Yoast will actually find problems with your content. It's a brilliant plugin. So if you press this I for pretty much any error here in Yoast, if you press this I, it will highlight the text for you and it will tell you, hey, you have got H1 tags in here. So then you would need to come in here and change this to H2. So now I have changed these to H2 heading two and you can see that that problem has disappeared. All other things you can see that Yoast is telling me are good, outbound links are good, internal links are good, meta description link, etc. So just simply follow what Yoast tells you and you will be in a good shape. Now I want to draw your attention to something to the length of the article. I recommend that your content should be a minimum of one and a half thousand words. Anything over one and a half thousand words is considered good uh, in today's world by Google and that's considered authoritative content. Of course your content has to be good, it can't just be you know, some rubbish uh, one and a half thousand words of stuff that doesn't even make sense. It has to be good in-depth content. Ideally you want to write something that's at least 
2000 words or more. And Yoast will also tell you whether your text length is good or not. So here it's telling me the text contains 1622 words. Good job. Step number five is to insert internal links. This is once again, one of the things that Yoast is actually paying attention to. And internal links are very important to be in your content. For example, you can see that I've got a, a link here. Check out my article about niches. Okay, and a couple of other internal links in this article as well as in every other article that I publish. This helps because this keeps the readers on your website for longer. So as they read your article on the website, as they're scrolling through, and they finish reading everything, they will see that there is a link here. So they'll say, check out my article about niches here. And if they click on it, they land onto another page on my website. And that means that instead of seeing just one page on my site, they will see two, three, four, potentially five pages on my website, which is actually a very good metric. Google tracks that um, and they give preference to the websites that are able to retain the visitors where the average pages viewed per visitor per session are higher. So internal links are very important. You want to make sure that the visitor, instead of just bouncing back or leaving to another website, they click on different things onto your website and they see different pages on your website. Next thing you want to make sure you do is inserting outbound authority links. Once again, Yoast will actually remind you outbound links. It says here, good job, because I've actually got links to each of these websites. So here, death to stock photos, I've got a link to that website. Um, internet was built around links and inserting links into your article to other high quality resources actually helps you. Uh, don't be afraid that this is going to mean that the visitors will leave from your site onto the other websites. You know, if they want to leave, they will leave anyway. But what this is telling Google is that your website is actually playing the internet game. You know, internet was built to uh, be interconnected and links between websites where you are providing links to other authority resources means that you are also an authority. So it's very, very important that you provide outbound links. This is one of the most important things you can do on your website to increase your website traffic. Next thing that I want to talk about is inserting videos into your content. I don't do this actually on every single post, but I have done this on quite a few on Caffeinated Blogger. For example, on this post, how to come up with a blog name, I have embedded a YouTube video which talks about how to start a blog. This is a video from my YouTube channel. And the reason why it's important to have some videos in your content is because that increases your metric of how much time people spend on your website. Because if somebody is browsing your blog and they start watching your video, while they're watching the video, they're staying on your page. Very important to understand this, they're actually staying on your page. So to Google, this signals that if they spend 10 minutes watching this video, that means that they've spent that extra 10 minutes on your website Okay, and that impacts your site metrics and your analytics. Instead of them just spending one minute on your site while they were reading the article, they spend that one minute reading the article and then 10 minutes watching the video. So that's 11 minutes total that they have actively spent on your site. And this is one of the metrics that Google pays very close attention to. So it's very important to insert videos on as many of your articles as possible. They can be your own videos or they can actually be videos uh, that you find on YouTube that are related to the topic of your article. If you start inserting videos on your content, perhaps you can even go back to the content that you've already got published and insert some videos into that content. You will see that the metrics, if you closely track them, the average time spent on your website by your visitors actually increases. And uh, you will probably see that slowly your rankings will improve as well. And that way you can increase your website visitors without any back. Well, that's everything. Thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel just below. Tick the bell notification icon as well to make sure that you stay up to date as soon as I upload my next video. I've got a couple of suggested videos and playlists for you here. Make sure that you watch those next. Thank you so much for watching once again. My name is Greg Kononenko, the caffeinated blogger, and I'll see you in the next video.